Georgia Energy Southern Arizona, it is now time for one of the most in-depth high school football shows in the border southwest. The Friday football fever hits your living room right about now. Good evening to you. I'm Paul C. Collin. And I'm Ari Alexander. Paul, hard to believe we're not even done with August. Third week of high school football. It is week two officially because we had a week zero. That's right, Ari, and it was an early start to the, pre to the prep season in the Old Pueblo, that's for sure. Let's get things going. One of the most highly anticipated matchups of the night, Miranda hosting Catalina Foothills. Let's strike up the band because here comes the Tigers, and on the opening drive, they'd be going to the air, and Trenton Borgay is about to lock the ball up to Coben Borgay for the nice 12-yard gain. Keeping it in the family, Morano would have to settle for a field goal with David Bertelson booting it through the uprights from 27 yards away. But later, Catalina Foothills would tie things up at three and into the second quarter, it is the Flying Tigers, Trent Bourget, plenty of time to get the ball to Colt. Shoot, that folks is a TD. 30 yards later, Morano leads 9-3 and the Tigers cruise 35-20 to to keep their unbeaten streak going this season. Luis Ramirez is unbeaten as the Tigers coach in the Tucson area. Congrats. All right, off to Amphi High School where the Panthers were sprinting onto the field in a hurry. You don't want to miss the coin flip, especially when it's Pima County School Superintendent Dustin Williams taking part in spreading the word of staying in school and getting involved in extracurricular activities. And the Amphi grad would see his alma mater hosting Tanka Verde High in the opening kickoff. Angel Taylor with the nice return for the Panthers, but Tanka Verde would get the ball back in a defensive duel early on. And here quarterback Corbin Austin fighting for every yard he can get. After that, Corbin Austin for Tanka Verde. The sophomore is about to keep the ball once again. Nice little game there. Dustin Williams, of course, and all the academics and coaches on the sidelines still having lots of fun and a good game in the end. Ampi wins big, 54 to 23. Moving on from the north side of Tucson to the far reaches of East Pima County and Vail. Let's send things over to Ari Alexander. Hey Paul, one of the early surprises of this season has been the Douglas Bulldogs. They were winless last year, but with a victory tonight on the road against Empire, Douglas could be 3-0 already this season. And here come the Ravens. Second half, taking on the Bulldogs of Douglas at Empire Field. Douglas defense much improved, and that is Kevin Chavez with the stop. This game tied at 14, and Empire quarterback Alex Verdugo trying to make something happen, but he is eaten up in the backfield. Elian Villasenor starts the play. Andres Moreno finishes the tandem sack. Now Douglas with the ball. Little option pitch here, and Christian Estrella breaking a long run into the Raven red zone. Now Douglas inside the five. This handoff to John Ballesteros. He is in for the short score. Douglas goes up 21 to 14. The final score, 42-26. Douglas, three and zero. Oh. Cienega at home against Sunny Slope out of Phoenix. Already up seven nothing in the second. And look at Thomas Webb Jr. That kid has a family. Webb from three yards out. Let's take one more look. Is this kid just gets like Mittberry crunched? 14-0 Bobcats up, and how about more of Thomas Webb? He won one of our Player of the Week awards last year, getting the pass breakup, so he does it on defense, and then Webb also the punter, and look at where this one goes. Little bounce, little Sienega roll, and ooh, that's out at the one, baby. That's three positions he's excelling at in this game alone. Sienega's defense would hold strong, and our reigning Tucson Roadrunners Player of the Week, Terrell Hayward, a little interception before half. Sienega goes on to win 35 to 7 over Sunny Slope. Hey, thanks a lot, Ari. One of the biggest contenders in the Tucson area for a state title lies on the campus of South Point High School. There are high expectations for the Lancers, especially after running back Bajon Robinson rushed for 300 yards and four touchdowns in the opening week, all in the first half. In fact, he bust out with a long TV run in the first to put South Point up today 7 0. But as we arrive to the game, here's the tail end of a Desert Edge High School touchdown from Kenneth Powell. It'd be all tied up at seven as U of A football great Jay Dobbins looked on there. And now towards the end of the first quarter and the South Point defense coming at you loud, rude, and aggressive. Trent Strong coming on strong. All 220 pounds of him. Check it out in slow motion. One thing's for sure, Desert Edge's Jihad Marks definitely took a hit. Into the second quarter we go, the boys from the Phoenix area would jump ahead after taking the hit. Jihad Marks would show, didn't affect him with the Nice catch, that throw from Tyler Henry is right on the money, honey. South Point trails 14 to seven, but after that, with everyone concentrating on Bajan Robinson, quarterback Mario Padilla is about to say, ciao, 
for now. Sayonara. Bye bye. Adios amigos. South Point ties the game up after the very long run. And in the end, South Point wins. Coming back 28 21. Hey, on to one of the most historic rivalries in Tucson, Saguaro against Sabino. And from the beginning, both teams would be airing it out. But Saguaro's Damian Wright is right in the right spot. And Wright is going to return the interception the right way. Getting the Cougars into scoring position. After that, Saguaro is going to get the ball to Isaiah Davis. And he's going to bust it in like Flynn. Sabino trails early. But after that, the Sabercats fool everyone, including our cameraman. Check it out because Jimmy Hamilton is off to the races. Yes, he'd be gone with the win. That'll tie things up for Sabino High School and in this showdown for Eastside Supremacy, Saguaro beat Sabino 34-7. Speaking of Sabino, former Sabino High School standout is back here in the Old Pueblo as his BYU squad gets set to take on University of Arizona. They'll take the field on Saturday against the U of A. You can see our interview and in-depth story on former Sabino wide receiver Matt Bushman on KVOA.com. But for now, I'll show you how he gave props to his longtime mentor, Sabino football coach Sly Lewis. Just all the teams, I've had the same coach named Sly Lewis. He's been my coach since I got there from Hurricane Katrina. And then he was my high school receivers coach also. So it's really cool, he's gonna be at the game. And it's just fun to be able to uh, have a chance to play in front of him, especially. Where I finished growing up in Tucson at school, just starting the season. Hey, don't forget on KBOA.com, we have an in-depth story on Matt Bushman and plenty of previews on the U of A opener against BYU. Check it out. As for tonight, we're far from over with my friends. After the break, Push Ridge was hoping to notch another win against Walden Grove, while Sunnyside and Rincon went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. More sports, more energy. Or Friday football fever after the break.